So President-elect Joe Biden's team is starting to take shape, and he's adding some individuals to his transition team that he doesn't necessarily want you to know about. He's not publicizing these additions because, well, if most Americans found out about them, then they would be pretty upset. So as Politico reports, two are Goldman Sachs veterans. Others have worked for consulting firms like McKinsey and Company and Boston Consulting Group, along with one Google and three Facebook employees. One is the daughter of a pair of longtime Biden advisors. They're all among the dozens of people Biden has quietly added to his transitions agency review teams in recent weeks, according to a review of the transitions website. The team members, which must be disclosed by the transition, offer the most comprehensive of picture of who's building the Biden administration. So once again, Goldman Sachs alumni will be in a president's team. I mean, <laughs> what is it that they are doing? If only I knew what it was that allowed them to curry favor with administration after administration, regardless of that administration's party affiliation. Hmm, what is it? Now, in terms of who these individuals are specifically, as Kenneth Vogel explains, this includes Monica Mayer and Eric Goldstein, a former Goldman Sachs VP and employee respectively, Matt Hernandez from a consulting firm, and Josh Zoffer of McKinsey. Now, one more McKinsey alum not mentioned here is none other than Pete Buttigieg, former 2020 candidate who Biden has nominated to lead the Department of Transportation. Now, Biden has not tapped Pete Buttigieg for this role because Pete Buttigieg is uniquely qualified or is like specifically passionate about transportation, contrary to what he is saying, which we're going to get to in a moment. Uh, but the reason why Pete Buttigieg is getting this job is because this is Joe Biden paying back a debt. When Obama called Pete Buttigieg and asked him to drop out and endorse Joe Biden, of course, Obama and Biden knew that this would come at a cost. And now this is a debt that is being repaid because Buttigieg backed off and cleared the field for Joe Biden, allowing him to become the Democratic Party nominee. And as a result, the president, he is getting rewarded for that. Now, we know this is the case because there are many more people who Joe Biden could have chosen other than Pete Buttigieg, who would be more qualified, because Pete Buttigieg is not qualified for this position. And that includes David Kim, who has eight years at the Department of Transportation, LA Transit. He's the head of California's state transportation agency. There's Sarah Feinberg, who has four years at the Department of Transportation. She led FRA. She's the head of the New York City Transit. John Porcari led Maryland's Department of Transportation, U.S. Department of Transportation, Deputy Secretary. I mean, all of these individuals, they could have been chosen for this position, but Pete Buttigieg, he needed some job in Biden's administration because that's what was obviously promised to him. So he's getting uh, the Department of Transportation. I have to share with you uh, <laughs> a quote from Pete Buttigieg. He says, quote, I also had a personal love of transportation since childhood. Who says things like this? Who has thought that thoroughly about transportation? Nobody says things like this. But I think that he knows it's a little embarrassing that he was given a job that he's completely unqualified for. So he has to try to make up some justification as to why he's in this position. But I mean, it's pretty obvious. We know that you got this job because you dropped out and endorsed Joe Biden. And this was promised to you. Not necessarily this job, but a job in Biden's administration. So just admit it. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to do that, but this is what happens all the time. You know, you'll you'll see someone do a fundraiser for a politician and they will in turn get a job. Uh, this actually happened with uh, Tom Wheeler, who became the FCC chair during the Obama years after he raised almost a million dollars for Obama, uh, you know, across both uh administrations 2008 and 2012 um and then he went on to try to repeal net neutrality or at least diminish you know the open internet as it is this was a former comcast lobbyist now thankfully that ended up working out because tom wheeler faced so much public pressure that he became an ally to the net neutrality movement but i mean we see this all the time you know we see people getting jobs as ambassador to a country that they have no uh, knowledge of or experience in and they don't even speak the language oftentimes this is what we see this is basically 
favors being done, and, and this is no different here. So when it comes to Pete Buttigieg, we know what's happening. When it comes to the Goldman Sachs individuals on Biden's transition team, we know that they probably did a fundraiser for him or donated to him. This is this is what we see in Washington, D.C. So this isn't necessarily surprising, but because it's not shocking, that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't be mad because this is still unacceptable, even if we've kind of become accustomed to it. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man.